Hey everyone, welcome back to Threadjucation. In this video, we're going to be talking about the history of Kith. Kith is without a doubt one of the most prolific brands in the game, so today we're going to be taking a look at how it got to where it is, as well as Ronnie Feig, the man that made it all happen. So without further ado, let's get into it. This is the history of Kith. Ronnie Feig was born and raised in Queens, New York, and by the age of 12, he was already working in the footwear industry. His mother's cousin, David Z, owned an eponymous chain of footwear stores throughout the city, and having always looked up to him, Ronnie asked for a job. David agreed easily enough, but I can assure you that that was the only easy thing about it. Ronnie was still just a kid, but he was now taking the train into the city after getting out of school, working long hours in the stockroom, then heading back home at the end of the night so he could get ready to do it all again the next day. Ronnie was happy to be working in the stockroom, but as he discussed in an interview with the Wall Street Journal, it didn't last all that long. About two months into this new job, he was climbing a ladder to move some boxes and ended up falling from the top shelf. Now don't worry, he ended up being perfectly fine, and as it turns out, this was kind of a good thing because it was at this point that David Z decided to move him out of the stockroom and into the front of the store. He'd always known that Ronnie was capable of more than just pushing boxes around, but he wanted to know that he was willing to put the work in, and after the fall, I guess he'd seen enough. So from that point forward, he began working a sales role, and this would prove to be an incredibly formative experience for him. He was still young, but now that he was out on the floor, he was becoming much better at identifying style trends. He knew which shoes were selling and which ones weren't. A lot of this he learned while on the job, but at the same time, he'd always had his own unique sense of style. You see, earlier in his childhood, Ronnie was like the countless other kids his age who wanted a pair of Reebok pumps. As cool as they were, they were also quite expensive, and so rather than buying him a pair of the pumps, his mother bought him a pair of Asics. They weren't as flashy, and at first he really didn't like them, but as time went on, they became his favorite pair. Now going back to David Z, Ronnie was successful in his role as a salesperson, and over the next few years he would work his way up to the role of assistant manager, and by the time he turned 25, he was promoted to head buyer. What this meant was that he was now the one deciding which shoes were being stocked at David Z's stores, and one of the first brands that he opened an account with was Asics. This was of course one of his personal favorites, but it quickly became a favorite among customers as well. As he recalls in an interview with Complex, the Onitsuka Tigers were pretty much flying off the shelves, and I don't want to downplay the significance of this, because prior to being stocked at David Z, ASICs were known more for their functionality than they were for their style. And the same could be said for David Z. Before Ronnie stepped in, the store was known more for its boots than it was for sneakers. Business-wise, this ended up being great for both David Z and ASICs. In fact, through this relationship, Ronnie befriended ASICs account manager Mike McLaughlin. Mike recognized Ronnie's commitment to the brand and offered him his very own ASICs collaboration. Technically speaking, this was branded as a collaboration between David Z and ASICs, but Ronnie is the one who designed the three eye-grabbing colorways, and he himself chose the Gel Light 3 model, because that is the same model that his mom bought him when he asked for the Reebok pumps. Now obviously the shoes look cool, but you have to remember that Ronnie wasn't exactly a big name in the sneaker community at this point, so there wasn't a whole lot of demand. They only produced 756 pairs of the shoe, with 252 of each colorway, which is why it is referred to as the 252 pack, and on the first day, they only sold a few. One of those pairs, however, ended up in the hands of someone very important. Seemingly at random, a guy came into the store and started talking to Ronnie about the shoe. Ronnie explained that it was a limited collaboration, the guy bought a pair, and that seemed to be the end of it. But the very next day, by some miracle, the David Z ASICs were featured in the Wall Street Journal. So what happened here? Well, as it turns out, the guy that came in to talk to Ronnie was actually an editor at the Wall Street Journal, and he was working on a story about limited edition sneakers. As you can see here, the article placed Ronnie's ASICs alongside limited edition Vans and Nikes, and this drove demand through the roof. The article had caught everyone's attention, and when I say everyone, I mean everyone. The very next day, there were people lining up to buy the shoe at David Z, but what you might be surprised to learn is that one of the people that walked into the store that day was the president of Adidas. He too had caught wind of Ronnie's collaboration and decided to stop in and introduce himself. They struck up a conversation, and by the time that they were finished, they had agreed to work on a collaboration themselves, the end result of which would be the David Z Adidas Black Tie Project Superstars. 
These were a pair of all black Adidas superstars, and the intention was to create a shoe that could be worn with a suit just as effortlessly as they could be worn with everyday clothing. There were only 400 pairs made, and they were initially launched at an exclusive friends and family black tie gala, which is why each one came with an Adidas branded necktie. Now in my opinion, this is one of the earliest examples of Ronnie's marketing brilliance, and even today, this holds up as an amazing product rollout. So between stuff like this and the work that he had done with ASICS, he was really starting to make a name for himself in the sneaker community. And he was even beginning to do collaborations under his own name, rather than under the umbrella of David Z. Now don't get me wrong, that was all great, but it was around this time that he began to realize that he was limiting his own potential. David Z was really more focused on selling boots like Timberlands, and that just wasn't the right environment for him to be selling limited edition athletic sneakers. Branching off on his own is something that he'd considered doing for a while, and that's why in 2007, while he was still working at David Z, he decided to launch his own brand called Kith. The name Kith comes from the old-fashioned term Kith and Kin, which basically means friends and family. So from the very beginning, the brand has been built upon the idea of creating products for a tight-knit community, and of course, offering very limited releases. This also explains why the brand's slogan is Just Us. Now when I say that Ronnie launched Kith in 2007, I want to be very clear in saying that it was really nothing more than a handful of t-shirts and jackets, which is why he would continue doing collaborations under his own name rather than the brand's name. But in 2010, that all changed. After nearly 15 years at David Z, Ronnie decided it was time to leave and start something of his own. He was going to open his own store. In order to open his own store, Ronnie partnered with longtime family friend Sam Ben Abraham. Sam already owned a chain of stores called Atrium, and he offered to let Ronnie run the sneaker section. But he had something bigger in mind. He wasn't leaving David Z just to go do the same job somewhere else. He understood the importance of building his own brand, and that's what he wanted to do. After talking about it for a bit, they came to an agreement. Ronnie would run the sneaker section, but it would be branded under the name Kith, and would basically operate as its own store aside from the fact that it was attached to Atrium. So yes, the first Kith store was technically part of another store, and while that may not sound ideal, it was just the start that Ronnie needed. And by the end of 2011, he'd opened up shop in both Brooklyn and Manhattan. Now anytime you start a business venture like this, there is an inherent level of risk, and that was certainly the case for Ronnie. Not only did he have to borrow money to make it happen, but he also gave up some pretty lucrative opportunities. As we've discussed, he'd made a decent name for himself in the footwear industry by this point, and while he won't give out any names, he's gone on record saying that after leaving David Z, he had offers to go and work for several major companies. As I'm sure you can imagine, this was quite tempting, but he pushed forward with pursuing his dream, and it's safe to say that it paid off. Right away, Kith became one of the most popular sneaker stores in the city, and it was for a good reason. During his time at David Z, Ronnie had formed relationships with account managers at several different brands, and in total, he had collaborated on more than 100 different pairs of shoes. So by the time he started his own store, he had no problem securing new collaborations and other exclusive releases. By the end of 2011, Kith was well on its way to becoming one of the most popular retailers in the city and eventually the world, but nowadays it's recognized as a brand just as much as it is a store. So what changed? Well, as I just mentioned, Kith actually started as a clothing line back in 2007 when Ronnie put out a few t-shirts and jackets, but it never really went any further than that, and he ended up diverting most of his time and attention towards sneakers. That was until 2012 when he received a birthday gift that would change everything. Again, in his interview with Complex, Ronnie explains that he received a pair of camo pants made by the brand Scotch and Soda as a birthday gift. He liked the pants, but they didn't quite fit right, so he brought them to a tailor and had them adjusted to his liking. After this, he began wearing them regularly, and as he recalls, he knew he was onto something when people started complimenting his pants more than they were complimenting his sneakers. That's what sparked the idea to create his own pants, so he had a local manufacturer create 12 pairs using the same camo pattern as the scotch and soda pants, but with the same adjustments he'd had done at the tailor, including a tighter fit and elastic cuff. He wasn't exactly sure how his customers would react, but he put the pants up in the store, and to his surprise, they sold out on the first day. Unable to tell if this was just a fluke, he had more made, put them back out, and once again, to his surprise, they sold out. He started upping the quantity each time, and before long, he found himself putting in an order for 1,000 pairs. For a brand that was just starting out, that sounds kind of crazy, but lo and behold, these two sold out. So what was happening? How was this sneaker store's in-house clothing line suddenly flying off the shelves? Well, the answer sort of lies within the question. 
Think back to 2012, and you may remember that jogger pants were extremely popular in the sneaker community, and what Ronnie had created was basically a high-end stylish jogger. They looked cool, and the elastic cuff around the ankle made it easy for you to show off your sneakers. In other words, he had basically created the perfect pair of pants for his customer base of sneakerheads. They were going into the store to buy shoes, and he was showing them the perfect pair of pants to go with them. It started organically, but in hindsight, it was the smartest thing he could have done. The success of these pants was proof of concept for Ronnie, and from that point forward, he started to take the idea of launching a brand more seriously. Something you might find interesting here is that even though he had now decided to launch a brand, he wasn't completely sold on the name Kith. That was of course the name of his sneaker store, but he thought it might be best to give his clothing line a different name so that he could market it separately. As we now know, he did end up sticking with the name Kith, and I honestly think that this played a major role in jumpstarting the brand's popularity. I mean, stuff like this is exactly why he pushed back against his business partner Sam, and demanded to have Kith be separate from Atrium. Even back then, he knew the importance of building his own brand, and so by the time he started his own clothing line, people were already familiar with the name. That being said, Ronnie began expanding the Kith clothing line and by the end of 2012, we had the Red Label Collection and the Blue Label Collection. Looking back at it now, these may not have been groundbreaking designs, but at the end of the day, Ronnie was once again giving his customers exactly what they wanted. Camo, bomber jackets, and joggers were all the rage back then, particularly within the sneaker community, and you could now walk into Kith and buy a pair of pants that could be the centerpiece of any outfit. For the purposes of launching a brand, these pieces were great, but there's no denying that it has changed a lot over the years. After the first few collections, we saw Kith ease up a bit on the patterns, as it instead shifted its focus to graphics. And yes, this would of course include the now iconic Kith Box logo. By the time that 2015 came around, Kith had gained some serious traction as a brand, and Ronnie was of course still collaborating on sneakers with brands like Asics and Puma. In fact, things were going so well that he decided it was finally time to expand. As discussed, Kith's retail space in Brooklyn was still technically just a small part of Atrium, but Ronnie had come a long way in just a short time, and he found himself in a position to buy the building. That's what he did, and so just like that, the Kith store expanded from 800 square feet to 3,000 square feet. This alone was a big change, but Ronnie didn't stop there. In order to create a truly unique shopping experience for his customers, he partnered with Daniel Arsham to redesign the entire space with a slick white interior, a display case of Ronnie's personal shoe collection, 750 Jordan 2 casts hung from the ceiling, and perhaps most famously, the first ever Kith treats. As a child, Ronnie was always obsessed with cereal, and it had been a long time dream of his to open a cereal bar in New York. Now that he had the space, he decided to turn that dream into a reality, and he set up an area in the store where customers could come buy cereal, ice cream, and milkshakes. As time has gone on, there have even been signature specials added to the menu created by friends of the store including LeBron James, Virgil Abloh, and Don C, just to name a few. So it goes without saying that he had taken the store to another level, and he was about to do the same with the brand in 2016. On one hand, 2016 was the year that Kith collabed with Nike for a six-month pop-up shop in New York, and on the other hand, it was also the year that the brand made its debut at New York Fashion Week. The collection titled Kithland featured nearly 100 different looks, as well as collaborations with several different brands including Bape and Off-White. Since this first show, Kith has made a number of other appearances at Fashion Week, but I should be clear in saying that the brand still doesn't follow the traditional fashion calendar. If Ronnie has a collection that he wants to show on the runway, he will, but other than that, he pretty much just puts stuff out whenever he's ready to. And I would like to mention that as of the time I'm making this video, he recently posted a photo on Instagram with the caption, No show this year, or maybe ever. Found love in a different process. What that process is, only time will tell, but the point here is that Ronnie has the freedom to do whatever he wants. A large part of this is because Kith doesn't do wholesale, meaning they don't let other stores sell their products so they don't have to line their collections up with any sort of buying calendar. The only time that Ronnie allows Kith to be sold at other stores is when they let him set up and manage his own section of the store, sort of like he did at Atrium back when he was first starting out. So far he's done this at stores like Bergdorf Goodman, Hirschleifers, and Selfridges. But for the most part, his focus remains on his own Kith stores, with current locations including New York, Los Angeles, Miami, Paris, Tokyo, and most recently Hawaii. If you've ever been to any of these locations, you know firsthand the level of effort that he and his team put in. The curation of brands, the interior design, the architecture, the music, and of course, the snack bar all come together to create a memorable shopping experience. 
I myself have stopped in on more than one occasion just to hang out and grab ice cream, and that's kind of the point. Kith stores are the type of place that you want to keep going back to time and time again. And as far as the clothing line, Kith is the type of brand that you just want to keep buying from time and time again. We've touched on this already, but Ronnie truly is the king of the collab, and this helps keep things fresh. During his career, he's literally worked on more collabs than I can count, including sneakers, apparel, and whatever else he can think of. But the drops are always limited, and he only works with brands that he personally wants to work with. Over the years, Kith has collabed with the likes of Nike, Adidas, Asics, Montclair, Levi's, Tommy Hilfiger, and perhaps the most impressive to me, Versace. Kith partnered with Versace in 2019, and it marked the first time ever that the fashion house has altered the iconic Medusa head. I can tell you for a fact that this is something that Donatella Versace does not take lightly, and that should tell you everything you need to know about how highly she thinks of Ronnie and the work he's done with Kith. So those are just a handful of collabs that the brand has done, but one of the coolest things about Kith is its collaborations with non-clothing brands, including Disney, BMW, Coca-Cola, Bergdorf Goodman, the list goes on and on. This just goes to show that Ronnie likes to think outside of the box, and it's collabs like these that keep fans waiting for every new collection. So that is just about everything I wanted to touch on for the history of Kith. Nowadays, the name Kith is nearly ubiquitous, but hopefully you now know a bit more about how it got to where it is today, and why Ronnie Feig is one of the most respected figures in the industry. Anyways, thank you for watching for education. If you liked this video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and other than that, I will see you next time. Have you ever basically been like, I have so many pairs of sneakers that I'm just gonna throw some in the ocean because I have so many that I can do killer shit like that? No. 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 <laughs>